I get asked all the time, can you make a video using something other than Lightroom or Photoshop? So today I'm diving into Luminar Neo, a platform that's been making serious strides lately, especially when it comes to landscape photography. And instead of walking through, you know, an entire edit, I wanna focus on a few of the newest tools that really caught my attention. Twilight Enhancer, Relight, Landscape Masking, and a super cool vignette tool. These features, along with many more, they're designed to save time and, and simplify your workflow without sacrificing creative control. And speaking of speed, both the, the editing process and the, the performance of Luminar Neo have come a long way. So in this video, I'll show you just how quickly you can take a flat raw file and turn it into something that really stands out using only Luminar Neo. And if you'd like to try this for yourself after watching, there's a 10% off discount code waiting for you in the description below. So a big thanks to Luminar for making that possible and for sponsoring this week's episode. So to jump right into it, these are three images from my recent workshop in the, uh, the Dolomites in Italy. We're gonna start right here with this image because it's absolutely perfect for what I wanna show you. So right up here is, uh, well, let me come over here to edit first. I'm gonna come down to the erase tool. This erase tool is super cool, but I wanna show you, let me just do a couple quick adjustments on this real fast. So let's just boost the exposure a touch. Let's add some contrast to the scene. Not too much, because I don't wanna kill that beautiful fog that's there. Let's bring down these highlights, and you might start to see what I wanted to show you up there in the sky. We'll bring up the shadows a little bit. Let's toggle this on and off before and after, before and after. I always love these little sliders back and forth just so you can see what we've done. So very minimal adjustments, which is by design. So let me close this right here, close the before and after, and I'm gonna come over here to erase. So you see that dust spot right there? That's what I really wanted to show you. You really couldn't see it before we made those adjustments, but a lot of times with dust spots, you have to see them in order to remove them. But what's really cool about this is there is actually a feature that says remove dust spots. So you just select that. It's gonna go ahead and remove, it's gonna well, apply the eraser tool and identify it and remove it. And as you can see, it found it and it is gone. It's such a small thing, but what a time saver because I can't tell you how many times you just sit there and you scan the entire scene trying to find those dust spots or you've already posted the photo to Instagram or wherever and then you see a dust spot. So being able to have a tool that identifies that for you is really nice. This is pretty cool too. As you can see, there's all kinds of just random structures in this scene. And what's nice is you can highlight all of these that you want to remove and then erase. So you don't have to find what you want to erase and then hit the eraser tool. I'm looking for some more of those little towers. So you can select everything all at one time and then hit erase. Other programs, you find something you want to erase, erase it and let it think, find something else, hit erase, and you kind of keep going back and forth in that process. This right here is much quicker. And as you can see, let me toggle that on and off. It is all completely gone. And if you want to, I'm going to maybe refine that area just a little bit. I'm just going to come up there and hit erase right there. And that is good. Very, very nice. Little, little tiny tweaks. Those little things right there really save you a ton of time. Now I had mentioned a few moments ago about a vignette tool. This is really neat. So I'm going to come down here to vignette right here. So what's really nice, let's make a very strong vignette so you can easily see this. And anyone who's ever watched any of my videos in the past, when I make a vignette, a lot of times I'll make a custom vignette because the center of your scene or the area around your vignette, it's not always in the dead center. Maybe you want one corner to be more dark than the other corners. You know, not always do you want every corner to be exactly the same um, darkness. So having the ability to determine where your subject actually is, and I'll show you what I'm talking about right now, is really, really cool. So I can hit choose subject here. You can see my pointer turned into the plus sign, and I can move the center anywhere. So this, if I wanna have the vignette around this area, I can do that. If I want the vignette around here, or here, or here, or for this image, I actually do want it to be more centered. Let me lift it up just a little bit because I don't wanna cut off the peaks of those mountains. But something to about right there looks really good. Now what else is cool, and I do this all the time, but I normally have to do it in a custom manner where I want to darken the sides of the image or darken the corners with the vignette, but I wanna brighten the center just a little bit. A lot of times you have to create a radial mask and you know invert it, but here there's actually a tool right down here called inner light. And as you can see, as I bring it up, it actually makes inside of that vignette a little bit brighter. So maybe to a point right here looks pretty good. Now we can back off on that vignette to maybe something about that. Let's toggle that on and off. So we have darkened the corners. We have brightened the inside of that vignette just a little bit. But those kind of little time-saving things are huge. You know, you don't really think about it. 
but having that type of tool in there, I think that's super, super cool. And that's a real time saver for me. One other technique that I use all the time that Luminar Neo has kind of created a much more efficient way to do it is something called relight. So I often talk about how transitions of light create depth in a photograph. So when you go from dark to light or light to dark, that's a transition of light and it makes the image feel more deep or have more depth. So what I like to do oftentimes is I'll drag a linear gradient across the foreground just to darken it just ever so slightly and then leave the rest of the image a little bit brighter. And that illusion creates a little bit depth, a little bit of a darker foreground that slowly bleeds into an area that's a little bit brighter. But there's actually a tool for that here. So if I come over here to brightness near, let's bring it all the way down so you can easily see it. You can see it's applying the, the brightness near right there or the relight. And then I can adjust the depth. If I wanna bring it closer to the bottom of the screen, I can come up here, however you wanna do it. So I'm gonna bring it down even more and then let's put this to a more realistic value to something about like there. I think that looks pretty good. So those are some really, really cool time-saving tools. Those are all techniques that I normally go through, but I usually have to kind of create some type of a custom workaround in order to achieve them. So to have that type of, a, you know, functionality built in is really, really nice. This is super cool right here. Let me come up here to edit. This is a really nice image from the Dolomites. I really enjoy this. So let's see, I'm going to come down here to Twilight Enhancer. This is one of the neatest features. So I'm gonna come over here to golden and let's give it just a second and look at that. It added this kind of, and, and it's not a sky replacement. It almost looks like a sky replacement. Let me just kind of bring it back to a, a more realistic value, but it's literally just tinting the sky in the surrounding area a warmer color or a golden color, giving you the illusion that there was nice golden light. You also have some of these other options here, which is really nice. It always kind of overdoes it a little bit at first, but it gives you the ability to, to make that change there. I, I really like this one mauve. I mean, look at that. And once again, I can't stress enough, that's not a sky replacement. It's just tinting the sky in this area all around the, the foreground, a different, a slightly, you know, blue hour color or a twilight color or a golden hour color. And it really, really does an amazing job. And it adds just that little bit of drama, that little bit of special kind of chef's kiss, if you will, on the photograph. And it looks very, very nice. Something else that's pretty cool here is this super contrast. You know, a lot of times you don't want to add global contrast to the entire scene, and maybe you're not comfortable using curves either. But to have the ability to add contrast to the highlights or the midtones or the shadows independently is very, very nice. And this is a great example of it here because I can bring the highlights contrast up and really bring out some detail in the sky there, which is really nice. And I don't want to add any kind of midtones contrast because I don't want to eliminate any of that cloud or fog moving across the bottom of the mountains. And I don't want to add any kind of shadow contrast either because I don't want to increase that fog. I want to leave it right where it is. So being able to only add contrast to the highlight areas of the image is very, very helpful. Now, something that I is, I, there's a lot of programs out there that you can do most things and the user interface works very well. There's some programs out there that can do absolutely everything, but the interface is very difficult to use. So to have a program that can literally focus stack, exposure blend, Orton effect, I mean, there's so many things that Luminar Neo can do in one program without having to bounce around, and the user interface is very easy to use. It's nice. And being able to do the Orton effect right here in the glow section is super handy. Come down here to type, Orton effect soft, Let's just add the Orton effect here. Very, very subtle. You can adjust the brightness of the Orton effect, which is very handy. You can add more contrast. You can adjust the warmth of the Orton effect. There's a lot you can do. As I toggle this on and off, you can see that right there. You have mystical, which is kind of a similar type of a technique, glow. This is one thing that it kind of trips me up. When you, when you make an edit like I just did, I made this adjustment and now it's gone. So to see your adjustments, you actually have to come up here to edits and then you can see what I did right here, this Orton effect. So if I toggle that on and off, you can see that. I don't know if, if I really like that, how it's separated like that. Maybe it's just something, a little bit of a learning curve, but that kind of trips me up a lot of times. But I did want to bring that up right there. Now, one more image. Let's see this one right here. I want to show you that AI masking because that is super, super helpful. If I come down here to landscape masking, there is AI mask here. You can see it's doing all this kind of like wizardry and thinking, and it's basically going to identify the areas of my scene that that Luminar Neo thinks I might want to create a mask for. And it pretty much hit it spot on. You know, I want to create a mask for the water, maybe a mask for the sky. 
And if you wanna make these kind of adjustments here, I can come back up to the develop section here, masking, AI mask, and it has them all already there. So if I wanna come over here to water, and let's go to adjustments. If I wanna bring up the exposure of the water a little bit, maybe add a little bit of contrast, maybe bring up the shadows just a little bit. Let's add even more contrast, really to make that water stand out. Look at that. Very, very nice, and that is always handy. Dodge and burn, this is something else that is really neat. You know, one of the more, most common questions I get is which ones, uh, which ones darken, which ones brighten? Dodge and burn, they're kind of confusing uh, names. Luminar Neo just basically said, let's just call it lighten and darken, darken and let's just skip all of the, uh, the verbal gymnastics, which I think is pretty, pretty handy. So you basically have darken, you have lighten. If I wanna lighten a certain area, Maybe make a swoop right through here. It's definitely gonna be overdone right now. We'll dial it in in just a second. So maybe something like that. This shoreline here looks pretty dark. So let's brighten that up a little bit. Maybe even add just a, a touch of light up here along the mountains. Don't worry, we're gonna dial it in here in just a moment. And then you can bring that light back just a little bit like that before and after, before and after. And of course, if there's an area you wanna darken, you just hit darken and you go through the same process. So those are some of the things. I know that was super quick, but I wanted to try and pack as much information into a shorter video as I possibly can. But those are some of the things that I think are really cool, that really make Luminar Neo stand out from other editing platforms. A lot of those things, like I mentioned earlier, I have to do custom workarounds in order to achieve. And it's really nice that Luminar Neo actually has a tool built just for that. So I actually find a lot of value in that. So as I mentioned before, there is a 10% off discount code in the description below. Be sure to check that out. There is no subscription model for Luminar Neo. It's a one-time payment, which should make many of you happy because I hear there are a lot of, uh, of uh, displeasures related to subscription model. So a one-time payment, I am sure, is going to be a a something that many of you find a lot of value in. So I hope you enjoyed this week's video. If you have any questions about anything covered here, please leave those in the comment section below. I'll do my best to get back in touch with you as soon as humanly possible. And if you enjoyed this week's video, if you could, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And as always, I really do appreciate you carving out a little bit of time to spend it with me here today. And I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.